Welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in now chapter 28, verses 1 to 3. We're going to move into the priestly garments and all that. Today we just take the first three verses. Then bring near to yourself Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the sons of Israel to minister as priests to me, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. You shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. You shall speak to all the skillful persons whom I have endowed with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister as priest to me. All right, so we're looking now, moving into the priestly garments. And what do we find here? Well, based on what we have here, it's very clear that the priesthood is going to be a hereditary priesthood. We're going to have priests that run from one line hereditarily. And so that's Aaron and, and so on. So this makes that very clear, that that's the way that runs. Now we also notice that God is designating the priests, not man, not, it's not being done by a, a random vote. God is picking them out. These, these guys are my priests, ding, 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 ding. He's named them. Okay, so God assigns the priesthood. Now we also notice here that it says the garments will be made for, for holy garments, for glory and for beauty. And so you kind of think, well, this doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, you know, God is, uh, does God's people, do they need to wear these uh, super duper uh, colorful garments in every which way, these super deluxe garments? Doesn't that sort of go against a lot of the simplicity that the gospel has? Remember, this is the way that God is removing sin from his people. This is a big deal. The, the sanctuary system is, is God's sin removal plan, his SRP. This is his big plan. And so uh, God is dwelling with his people. He's close by. I mean, this is his house where he lives among his people. So he's come very close to us. So yes, the highest uh, picture we have for, for beauty and for glory, those things should be that way so that we don't lose sight of we're the creatures, he's the creator. So he, we are the ones who have sinned. He is the one who's going to cleanse us from sin. You see the giant, giant, immeasurably giant difference. God loves us, and because he loves us, he's, he's going to actually give his only, his one and only unique uh, Jesus, the one of the part of the part of the Godhead himself, Jesus, God will come, he'll take human flesh, he will die for us, he'll live without sinning, die for us on the cross, his life will measure as a substitute for ours, his life will also serve, also serve as a, a complete, completely appropriate example for us. He could do it in our fallen humanity, so we can do it in our fallen humanity with his strength, divine strength. And so, yes, holy garments, garments for glory and for beauty are fully appropriate. We're talking about the God of the universe, the God who designed blackberries, who designed apples, who designed humans, who designed planets. We're talking about the God who designed holiness. So, yes, uh, it's appropriate. Something else here that I picked up from one of the commentaries, I just want to mention it here. Uh, in the absence of a monarchy in Israel, these, vest these vestments made the high priest the leader of the people. Because Israel was begun as a theocracy rather than a monarchy, the sort of garments that conferred dignity and authority that a king might have worn in other cultures were worn by God's high priest in Israel as a way of confirming the high priest as representative of, of Yahweh for purposes of worship. So, uh, let me see, ST, that would be the Stuart Commentary, page 604. So, yes, Stuart mentions this, that a lot of the kings, secular kings, you know, would have uh, been dressed in extreme ways. And in Israel, the high priest, uh, because it was a theocracy, at least for a period here. So, yes, this is the highest thing. And so it's fully suitable for the high priest to have this. By the way, he didn't wear this just any random time. Uh, there were just very distinct times. And even on the Day of Atonement, he wouldn't wear this. He wore white uh, clothes. But we'll talk about, maybe talk about that another time. Uh, what was that one last piece I wanted to mention? Oh, yeah. Did you notice that the spirit-filled workmen here, the very first people in the Bible, it says, I filled them with my spirit of wisdom. Who? Who do you think? The priest? Moses? Aaron? No. It was the, the craftsmen that are making this stuff. So you kind of think, well, this is about the, the high priest and the leaders and all that, but just the basic people who are making the garments and the utensils and the, the ash pans and the uh, Ark of the Covenant casing and so on in the sanctuary, the people who are making those things, those people are people who God is endowed with the spirit of wisdom. So the first people we find in the Bible who are spirit-filled, 
not the priest, not the preacher, the people who are making the stuff with their hands. So just kind of an interesting little note there, I thought. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning as we carry right on in Exodus 2.8. Mm-hmm.